This is the Almost Timely Newsletter for the week of October 29th, 2023. Content authenticity statement 100% of this newsletter was made by me, the human. No AI was used to generate any part of this issue. There's a link in the newsletter to learn why this kind of disclosure is important. Administrative note, we're moving. This newsletter is moving to Substack, assuming I can get through all the <clears throat> the hoops to, to get the list moved over because a very large list is going to trigger all sorts of alarms. But uh, moving over to Substack, if you'd like to move yourself over sooner rather than later, if you'd rather uh, you do it yourself than, than wait, you can do so. Just visit the, the newsletter subscription page. Uh, that would be appropriate if you're someone who likes to read Substack newsletters in the Substack app. You'll be able to find it there. The address uh, is ChristopherSPen.com slash newsletter. That'll bounce you over to the new home. All right. What is on my mind this week? Key roles in your generative AI pilot team. Today, let's talk about who should be on your AI pilot team. Well, first, uh, let's talk about what an AI pilot team is. Many Many organizations right now have individual people, people like you, trying out generative AI for all kinds of purposes, from drafting emails to content creation to coding. Very few of those uses are officially sanctioned, supervised, or audited, which could lead to some pretty big problems down the road, problems like data leakage. This is really the heart of the matter. Generative AI is a transformative technology. Like electricity or the internet itself, generative AI changes everything it touches. And like electricity and the internet, it can be used for great good or great harm. Clamping down on the use of generative AI with a bury your head policy in the sand, no AI at all here, right? Uh, that, that policy, that point of view, that's going to handicap your organization. More progressive, more risk-taking competitors... Yeah, they're going to adopt generative AI while you hide from it, and they're going to eat your lunch. So they will be better, faster, and cheaper than you. That is not a winning formula for success. But a free-for-all, no-holds-barred, wild, wild west approach isn't a winning formula either. People will use it for tasks they shouldn't, either because the task itself is not well-suited for AI, which is something you'd want to know, or there's substantial risk like working with protected data in unprotected systems. For example, someone who uploads personally identifying information from your customers into a system like ChatGPT is basically handing protected information to an unsanctioned third party, and that is definitely not the right approach either. The best choice is that centered approach, not too risk-averse, not too reckless, sort of the Goldilocks thing, right? But how do you get there? That is the role of an AI pilot team. So what is this team? What is an AI pilot team? It is a group of people selected to help build out and test use cases for generative AI in your organization, do small-scale pilot projects to validate those use cases, and help create standard operating procedures that enable AI without compromising safety or harming innovation. Again, you don't want to go to either extreme. To achieve this goal, an AI pilot team needs a very specific set of skills, skills that help achieve the overall goal of enabling AI in your organization. The right people with the right roles will quickly dispel misconceptions and roll out practical use cases for your organization to adopt generative AI. What are those roles? In no particular order, you're going to need five major roles. The data expert, the business expert, the subject matter expert, the technical expert, and the supervisory expert. Let's step through what each of these roles uh, does on an AI pilot team. First, the data expert. The data expert's role is very straightforward. To know what data is available within your organization, where it lives, who has access to it, how protected the data is, and how, if at all, that data can be surfaced for use with generative AI. In the pilot team, the data expert is essential for knowing what data you're allowed to work with and help develop use cases for generative AI with that data. Now, this doesn't necessarily have to be someone with formal database or data engineering backgrounds either. It just needs to be someone who knows where the data is and what you're allowed to do with it. Two, the business expert. Someone on the pilot team has to ask the question that my partner and CEO, Katie Robert, asks me all the time, which is, so what? <laughs> what is the purpose of any given use case? What does it do for the business, for your department, for the goals you've set out to achieve? So what? Generative AI is the shining object at the moment, and 
everyone is still trying to figure out what it is and isn't good at. But someone has to ask the so what question. And they have to do it on a regular and frequent basis so that pilot projects make sense and continue to make sense. Eventually, when you present your results to stakeholders, they'll ask the same question. So it's easiest if you start with that question in mind. So what? What's the benefit of this? How does this help us? Three, the subject matter expert. In many companies, the subject matter expert is not the business expert. How the company makes money is different from how the company does what it does, right? The lead food scientist is not the CFO or the COO, even though both are important. The subject matter expert's role on the AI pilot team is to bring deep knowledge about the company and its core competencies, mapping what's known about existing processes to generative AI capabilities. For example, say you work at a bakery. The subject matter expert would be the head baker, be able to tell you, uh, help you understand how existing recipes were developed. You would use that knowledge to work with generative AI, maybe to create some new recipes, and then your subject matter expert would inspect the outputs and say, Yes, that's feasible, or no, that won't work because the large language model somehow assumed baking powder and baking soda are the same thing. That subject matter expert brings that expertise, that knowledge of how things work to your pilot projects. Number four, the technical expert. The technical expert's role in an AI pilot project is clear. Their job is to help manage the implementation and usage of generative AI. They provide knowledge about what AI can and can't do help map AI to current processes, and do the deployments of generative AI within pilot projects. Here's where things are going to be a little challenging for folks, particularly folks who are very, shall we say, hierarchy aware. The technical expert, by definition, is the person or persons in your organization who have the most experience with generative AI specifically. Not a general technical expert, Uh, necessarily, not an IT person necessarily, but the person who has the most hands-on knowledge and time of generative AI. That might very well be the most junior person on your team, or for all you know, the janitor, right? But whoever it is, they need to be on the pilot team because they'll be the best at helping bring use cases to life and whatever their title and role is, however senior or not they are, If they truly have the most hands-on time in that role, they are the expert and you will have to treat them as such. And for some organizations, that's going to be an obstacle. Last is the supervisory expert. Sometimes they call it the scientific expert, but really the supervisory expert. It is fine to tinker around with generative AI, to test out different things and see how, how things go. However, once you start building out an actual AI practice, Winging it and tinkering are not sustainable strategies. It's what companies did most wrong with the advent of these things. Smartphones, remember? Companies either ignored them or tried to ban them, and employees kept bringing these things to work, and it caused all sorts of havoc. If we want to avoid that mistake this time around, we need a a supervisory and a scientifically minded expert on our team, someone who can set up the testing and measurement of our pilot use cases, show meaningful and mathematically sound improvements, and critically, critically ask the one question, the most important question in generative AI that is almost never asked enough, which is, what could go wrong? Nobody asks that question nearly enough. The supervisory expert, the scientifically minded expert knows to ask that question, knows to plan for all manner of scenarios going sideways, and knows how to anticipate problems in advance when designing experiments and test cases. Now, let's talk about rolling out these roles. You might be saying to yourself right now, hey, we don't have nearly enough people to build out a team of five just for piloting AI. Or you might be in the opposite boat and saying, A team of five isn't nearly large enough to encapsulate all the different departments and roles and use cases in your mammoth organization. Maybe you're like IBM and you've got 300,000 employees, right? That's why I call these roles instead of jobs. One person can play multiple roles in smaller organizations, and many people can participate in just one role in larger organizations. For example, at my company, I play the role of the data expert and the technical expert. Sometimes I play the role of the subject matter expert, sometimes not. 
Katie often plays the role of the supervisory expert. I mean, she is the CEO and the business expert. Again, she's the CEO. What matters is that someone is fulfilling all five of the roles in some capacity so we don't have dangerous blind spots. If you can imagine someone just you know, running out pilot projects and no one is asking what could go wrong, well, a whole bunch of things are going to go wrong because no one's asking that question. No one's thinking through, gosh, that seems like a really bad idea. Right? At a large enterprise, I could easily see each of these roles being part of a pilot team in every department. HR might have its own AI pilot team with one or more people in each of these roles. Finance would have its own pilot team. Sales would have its own pilot team and so on and so forth. You might even have it by office or region or country if, if your company's large enough, right? If you're, again, if you're IBM, you've got 300,000 employees around the world, you're going to have pilot teams all over the place. As with a small company, the key is to ensure that you have all five roles covered in some capacity for each of the pilots. Your AI pilot team properly staffed will be the vanguard, the scouts ahead of the army who spot the obstacles and clear the path for everyone else. In a different issue, we'll talk about the soft skills you need for each of the people on the pilot team because there are some critical personality traits you do and do not want on your pilot team. For example, someone who is resistant to AI probably is not a good choice for that team. Uh, but for now, Start thinking about who your AI pilot team might want to have on it and what of those five key roles they will play. All right, let's get into the rest of the news for the week. Uh, in case you missed it, this past week talked about flipping your PR strategy in the age of generative AI. If you want to, if you want to work with how large language models work, you're probably going to need to change things around from how you've been doing public relations. So go check that out. Um, also, some uh, some dire warnings about stop being an hourly knowledge worker business because things are really, really changing fast there. And uh, did a great episode of the podcast this week with uh, with Katie on the CMO survey and some findings from that and some really, really dumb things people are doing with their 2024 budgets. So go check that out. Uh, let's see what we've got for jobs this week. We have uh, analytics engineer at Harnum, data analyst at Indeed.com, head of analytics and data science at Intrepid Digital, Java engineer at Save the Children UK, marketing analytics manager at Beyond Finance, marketing operations manager at BirdEye, marketing research sales director at Insights Now, senior analytics implementation engineer at Sky, senior analytics manager at Lego. That's going to be a fun job. Uh, senior data analyst at Cox Careers, senior manager of marketing analytics at Asurian, senior principal customer success manager at Telium, and web analytics search specialist at Career Portal. So lots and lots of things happening there. In other news this week, this is the one-year anniversary of the birth of X and the death of Twitter. Uh, yes, Twitter was, was fully acquired on uh, this past week, October 27th, 2022, uh, signifying its demise and the creation of the company X and how that has gone. Yeah, I'm over on threads. See you there. Uh, we also have stories on navigating the Taylor Swift PR playbook, which of course is, <laughs> I mean, Taylor Swift is now a, a billionaire, I believe I saw in the news, uh, which is congratulations to her. Uh, top AI shops failing transparency tests. OpenAI forms a new team to assess catastrophic risks of AI. I mean, here's an easy one. Misinformation is one that's going to cause massive, massive problems. Also have uh, some new stuff from IBM. A brain-like IBM chip, chip could cost, cut to the cost of AI. An architect to operationalize your sustainability goals. Uh, and some pieces in the Atlantic, one of which was the junk is winning on the internet, which is an interesting piece. Upcoming events. Uh, this coming week, I'll be at Digital Now in December. And then uh, we've got the Lab Products Association in Boston. And then a a couple of private things, Social Media Marketing World in San Diego in February and Maycon in Cleveland in September of 2024. So already booking out events pretty far out into the future. That is the news for this week. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being here. Hope that uh, you found some value in it and we'll talk to you next time. Remember, if you are not on the Substack and you want to be sooner rather than later, go ahead and go to that subscription form. Talk to you next time. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you want to know when new videos are available, hit the bell button to be notified as soon as new content is live.